Logan Paul has just orchestrated one of the biggest scams in YouTube history. I mean, when you dig deeper into the storyline in this cast of villains, it makes Jordan Belford look like an absolute angel going straight to heaven. Now look, I've always said this about being a YouTuber, having this platform, being lucky enough to be considered an influencer, albeit on a smaller level, but we have a responsibility and an obligation to the fans and to the community who supports us. Because without you, we have no influence. We have no platform. And rule number one for me, first and foremost, is always do not break the trust of your fans. Logan Paul has just shattered that and manipulated it into oblivion. Now look, I know there's a lot of stories going around around this right now, but if there's one channel I could highly recommend for more information and in-depth dive into this situation better, it's none other than CoffeeZilla. He is an investigative journalist here on YouTube. He spent a year deep diving into this Logan Paul situation breaking down the facts and the different players for us. And what it basically all boils down to is Crypto Zoo. This is Logan Paul's business idea for a new game that is going to revolutionize the crypto and NFT industry. And I'll let him put it in his words. I'm, I'm excited to launch, uh, to launch my game. You keep using a, and you just did it again. You keep using a word there, game. You're not using like a project. It's a game. It's a game. It's a fun, it's a really fun, game that makes you money a game that makes you money so you're telling me that i can have fun and i can earn income at the same time yeah that's a win-win that's going to be a layup for anybody watching anyone is going to be interested with that now look it gets a little bit deeper than that in terms of how you actually generate revenue generate residual income from this and i'm going to let coffeezilla break this down well let me try to break it down for you this is how it was supposed to work you started by buying this crypto token called zoo which is their in-game currency. And you use zoo coins to then buy egg NFTs, which you Makes can then sense. hatch to become animals. You then can breed those two animals to become hybrid animals. For example, if you breed a gorilla and a kitten, you get a gore kitty. Look at that. I mean, that's a face only a mother could love right there. Who doesn't want a gore kitty for a and pet? And the more rare the NFT, the higher the daily yield of zoo tokens that animal earns you every day. Theoretically, it works like almost like passive income. You can then burn your animal NFTs to release the zoo they earned back to you. And from there, you can invest it into eggs or just cash out. There we go. So that's essentially how you make the money. Look how this sets up. Has anybody ever heard of a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme? I mean, the Egyptians would be proud of just <laughs> the foreshadowing that is happening with the pyramid here in the structure of the game. So basically, you get these coins. You get his version of crypto. You get these zoo coins and you buy an egg with it. And that's your investment because you don't know what the egg is going to become. You're hoping, much like buying a packet of Pokemon cards, that you're going to get that rare holofoil. In this case, maybe the egg produces some gorgeous hybrid child between a lion and a tiger. And you get a roaring liger with unicorn pegasus wings that all of a sudden has a high value that you can then resell. Maybe you can breed it with other animals and... You know, the possibilities are endless. It's kind of like we've resurrected Tamagotchi Baby from the fires and depths of hell and have just found a way to recreate it in a new crypto-friendly family fun environment. But yeah, basically in essence, you have the coins themselves, which can, you know, accrue value as they get traded, as the currency rises and deals with market fluctuations. So you could just be a trader and you can buy and sell his zoo coin, or you could play the game itself. You could invest in the eggs. Maybe you could sell those eggs before they hatch because there could be greater value in that, much like selling a booster pack before you open it up and see what the trading cards are. Or you could try to become like an awesome Pokemon style crypto breeder and just, you know, keep crossing and playing mad scientists and see what you get with these different combinations. Fair enough. I think there's enough there from initial idea and plotting it out that, yeah, there's potential. There's enough to keep people engaged, to keep people interested, to uh, give them a reason to try to play your game and try to make money. But that's kind of where the good just stops and we draw a line. From there, it starts to get ugly. As things unfold, come to find out that appearances aren't always what they seem. It's quick to make a digital asset with, you know, unique randomly generated characteristics. We handmade art for the past six months, bro. Approval, very specific notes, 10 different artists making art for our project. Handmade art. I mean, that's beautiful. What art isn't handmade? But you can see from Logan's perspective, the marketability of this. You have something original, something we've devoted a lot of time to, right? The animal images are gonna be very unique. You know, there's a value to that because those animal images, those eggs are NFTs and many art, has been traded via NFTs before. The problem is that it's not 
exactly original. Actually, come to find out that Logan Paul's animals are all the product of stock photos. Basically, you take Adobe stock. Hi, how you doing? Pay for a monthly subscription, get all these stock photos of animals, use Photoshop, little bit of magic, just combine characteristics from these stock photos and voila, all of a sudden you have something that is handmade and that you've invested six months in and you make it sound like you've really gone over the top to give you something that really a child could put together in moments. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I like to call false advertising and misleading the consumer. But hey, politicians do it all the time. I mean, it's nothing new in our world today, but it doesn't stop there. Logan Paul then goes on to promote this game saying it's, you know, incredibly unique. He has literally invested millions into this game. He's pumped so much into the development of it, into the developers themselves, into the artwork, the infrastructure. Only problem, as CoffeeZilla comes to find out, the developers weren't getting paid so they stopped working on the project. The art, as we pointed out, wasn't exactly original. They were just taking stock photos, which then begs the question, what exactly were they investing in? We have a massive team behind it and are probably out of pocket like a million just because we believe it's gonna work. On development. Yeah. We're out of pocket a million on development, and yet we haven't actually paid our developers. And this isn't the first time that he uses this live. This isn't the first time that he tries to pitch this. Now, listen, all credit to Logan. He's a multi-millionaire. He's a successful influencer. You know, he's, he's done a great job of getting kids and teenagers to watch his content over the years. But that doesn't mean that no matter what business you touch, you're automatically going to be successful and make money. And in order to do well at business, you have to, well, invest the time into building the foundation and the groundwork of a good business. Or you could just scam people and try to run away with their money. Now, before we go any further, we have to talk about the redemption arc of Logan Paul. We all know the Suicide Forest video that he caught a lot of attention, a lot of press for. He came out, he made an apology video, and it's felt like ever since then, he's been on a redemption arc for good. It's felt like the classic YouTube villain turns into a hero story. You know, he starts off as someone who's taking a lot of heat, a lot of criticism. He's been very immature. He seems very self-centered, conceited, taking advantage of others, and he's learned from it. And then he starts to rebuild and transform himself bigger and better. His boxing absolutely takes off. Floyd Mayweather fight more viewed than the Suicide Forest video. His own villain, KSI, he forms an unsuspected alliance with. They launch their own energy drink, which absolutely takes off. And he starts cranking out quality content that people can enjoy. I mean, hell, I even reacted to his Antonio Brown diss. I love the trolling of Antonio Brown. I thought it was a fun video. I enjoyed that. I'll even leave the links below for it. But there's only so far that the goodwill of the public can get you, boys and girls. And in this case, as I always say, someone's true character will come out in the end and will rise to the top. So fast forward, it's launch day the game launches. You have a ton of people who invest. We're talking multi-million dollar valuation into his coin. There's a lot of people that are going all in on Logan Paul that believe in him as a marketeer, believe in him as a successful businessman. They believe he's changed. They have the trust. They have the faith in him. And guess what? The game doesn't even work. Half the people who get eggs can't even hatch them. Within the contract itself, there's actually no way to take the eggs and what you hatch and what you create and to turn that back into coin, into making money, into having proper evaluations on it. Basically, the entire gameplay mechanic, the whole structure and system is just fucked. And everything that they said it was going to do, it doesn't do. Which, okay, let's look at it from a business perspective. I'm a business owner, right? I have a product. The product is not working. I get consumer feedback. We have a lot of issues with it. So I take on board that consumer feedback and then I work to fix it, to improve my product, to make a better product. Then we re-roll it out and we go from there and we learn as we go and we find something that makes the consumer happy, that keeps them coming back so that we can continue to grow our business so that they continue to purchase our product and round and round we go on the merry wheel known as capitalism. But what does Logan do instead? Dead silence. You know, he touts this as one of his greatest projects. This is going to be absolutely game changing. And then a month later, he acts like it doesn't even exist. In fact, he then tries to use the classic misdirection. And instead of trying to fix the current project that is only a month old in development, he instead starts to tout a new surprise, new secret project, another NFT project to try to distract people and keep the wheel turning and moving forward. Which, okay, fair enough. He's a businessman, right? He's going to dive into a number of different businesses. He's going to try different things. He's going to continue trying to make money. The problem, though, is that you have a lot of people who have invested in CryptoZoo. Most of them are sitting on eggs that they can't hatch. The other ones who have actual animals can do nothing with them. And on top of that, 
people are realizing that this game is not working, word is getting out that it's not functioning the way it should be, and the coin just completely collapses, so you can't even trade it or get rid of any of your assets. But when in doubt in cases like this, always follow the money. While a ton of his fans were losing money, guess what? People on the inside, they were making a hell of a profit. In fact, they made millions. I mean, seriously, if you look at the cast of characters involved, it's like a movie script gone wrong. There are no heroes. It is only one villain trying to outdo the other villain. I mean, let's look at the, the founders of this project. The head of development that they hired is none other than Eddie Ibanez. And this guy is a career fraudster. He claimed he went to MIT. They've got no records of him. He claimed he was an orphan. But then he turned around with his family on live TV and talked about recipes that he received from his living mother. I mean, this man has scammed billionaires into believing his lie. I mean, he's even gone so far as to convince people that he was the analyst responsible for helping the Philadelphia Eagles win their Super Bowl. Never mind the rise of Nick Foles being a Tom Brady killer and absolute savage in the finals. And this was the man who was running the whole operation who didn't pay the developers on time, and also who cashed out when other people were losing literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. Crypto King, which if you read that name just makes me want to vomit already, who's already been involved in one Logan Paul Pokemon-related scam in the past, coming back for a sequel, part two, resurrecting an evil villain. You have Logan Paul's manager on top of all this, Jeff Levin, who is supposed to be background checking and screening all these people, making sure that the ship is right, that the house is in order. Instead, he's hiring all these fraudsters. He's letting them get away with with these things and then when coffeezilla tries to reach out to him and try to get the truth instead of just coming out revealing it giving them the evidence that is needed to silence this case and situation he not so subtly threatens to sue coffeezilla and to silence him i mean you've just got a lot of winners at the game of morality going around the table right now i mean these are the people that will be driving the bus to the depths of hell with me and possibly the greatest story that baffles me on top of all this is that they had a huge conspiracy to squeeze as much money as they could before they even launched the game. They decide to release the coin before making an announcement. They sneak it out there so that they can have sort of this private pool that they can swim in. What that lets them do is then buy the coin at an incredibly cheap price, as much coins as they want, because no one else should be buying it. No one else should be driving the price up. Then when Logan does decide to announce two months later, a bunch of people all of a sudden jump into the pool, but guess what? They have all the best spots reserved already. They can sit there and watch as the evaluation just completely skyrockets and sell whenever they want. And that, boys and girls, is textbook conspiracy for market manipulation. It's not really legal or playing by the rules when you're trying to rig the entire board in your favor, especially when it comes to the markets. Just ask big banks in the housing crisis. So basically what we have is a situation where Logan Paul announced this huge project and he misled his followers, right? He advertised them a product that didn't exist. He said it was going to do things that it didn't. It's false marketing. He then hired a bunch of people who are fraudsters and scammers themselves. And what did they do? Well, what they do best, scammed and manipulated the market. When things started to go south and people were realizing that this is not a good investment, that they are going to lose a lot of money, Logan Paul shut up about it. He kept quiet. He didn't come out and address his fans. He didn't come out and maintain that line of trust that we are supposed to have as influencers, that responsibility that we have to you all. No, instead he tried to use smoke and mirrors, he tried to distract and move on from it. And he was probably gonna get away with it because the only ones who are aware of the situation really are those who invested until CoffeeZilla came along and exposed them. Now all of a sudden, you have all kinds of creators, myself included, that are making videos, raising awareness on the situation. And lo and behold, it is now forced Logan to finally respond. But instead of getting out in front of this, instead of easing concerns, he has said that everybody has to wait. We have to wait for his podcast on January 4th to get the truth. Bullshit. Now look, I'm sure in the coming days, there's going to be a lot of throwing other people under the bus. There's gonna be a lot of finger pointing, a lot of he said, she said. Logan will probably come out and argue that he has not liquidated any of his coins. Therefore, he hasn't directly profited from this situation, which is fair. The problem I have is that you have thousands of people who have lost significant amounts of money and they have no chance to get it back right now. And this is where that trust between content creator and fans comes into existence. This is where that sense of community and that responsibility that we have to you all. Whatever Logan says, wherever he wants to throw blame, look, we live in a time where inflation just continues to rise. People's money is highly valuable to them. And when you take money out of someone else's pocket, you owe them something in return. The simple fix and the simple solution is fix the fucking game. Go back and do what you said it was going to do in the first place. Don't do this, oh, I can't trust these developers. They're running away. They're doing this, that, and the other. No, 
Go find a good team. Go get your house in order and go get the game right. You know, when the team falls apart and doesn't win a game the entire season, guess what happens? We fire the head coach. We fire who was running it. The same happens with CEOs of companies. We hold the ones who are in charge responsible. So it doesn't matter if there were bad actors underneath of Logan. At the end of the day, he's the one who hired these bad actors. He's the one that brought them into his circle. He is therefore responsible for them and the consequences of their actions. So now it's time to fix the mistakes that you made. Now it's time to clean up. And it is in situations when people are at their lowest that we find out what they're truly made of. That we find out who their character is. And in the coming weeks, we're going to find out a lot about the character that is Logan Paul.